We welcome you to Stanford for one of the most highly anticipated matches of the women's soccer season. The national 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 champion Santa Clara Broncos are here to face the Stanford Cardinal. Welcome to Kagan Stadium, everyone. Stanford grad Troy Clarity alongside Santa Clara grad Danielle Slayton. And Danielle, this should be a terrific matchup. Let's dive into it deeper with both teams, starting with the Stanford Cardinal and a terrific junior, Maya Doms, who's been off to a fantastic start so far this season. Maya Doms, the leading point getter for Stanford right now, but getting all four of her goals in the first two games of the season. But the reality and benefit for Stanford is that goal scoring production has been quite diversified. Abby Grubel has four, Andrea Kitahata has three, Bell Breedy with four, and two in the last game versus LMU. But Doms, certainly one of the big bosses on the pitch for the Cardinal. Doms is on the rise. Kelsey Turnbow already there, one of the most dangerous players. I could watch this goal of hers against Cal on a loop forever. Well, Kelsey Turnbow is your reigning offensive MVP of the College Cup, and she's playing very well right now. She's good off the dribble, a prolific goal scorer, as you can see right here, and her ability to combine with Izzy Dequila is a real threat for the Santa Clara Broncos up front. And that goal came against one of the best defenders in the Pac-12. Well, it's always special when Stanford and Santa Clara Clara meet this year even more so as these two programs have won three of the last four college cups. Stanford Cardinal winning in 2019, hoisting the trophy over North Carolina, a 0-0 result that ended up in penalties. Katie Meyer comes up with a big save and recently graduated Kiki Pickett scored that game winning penalty kick for Stanford's third national championship. On the flip side, Santa Clara, who also won in penalties, but just this last spring, Izzy Dequila with that game winner in penalties after Kelsey Turnbow scored the equalizer in the second half over Florida State to send it there. The Broncos winning their second national title, 2020 National Champions. Well, it's a sold out crowd expected here at Kagan Stadium, and this could be a show. Santa Clara, Stanford, don't go anywhere. The Battle of Champions is straight ahead. A picture-perfect Sunday afternoon on the farm as we are here at Stanford University in Kagan Stadium. 77 degrees for Santa Clara versus Stanford. A series that has plenty of history behind it, as you might imagine. These two schools separated by just 11 miles, but certainly so many great matchups between these two. The last time that the Cardinal met the Broncos, Stanford came away 4-2 winners. Katarina Macario putting Stanford ahead for good in the 77th minute that day. That was then, this is now. The Cardinal and the Broncos. Moment of solidarity complete, and away we go. The Cardinal and the Broncos. Enjoy the match, everyone. Santa Clara 3-2-2 two two on the season, season ranked number 11. In this week's coaches poll, Stanford at 5-2, ranked number 10. Give it the starting 11 for both squads as we go along here. The throw in, there's Kelsey Turnbow's first touch. We talked about her at the start of the show. Tried to squeeze it forward. Cardinal come away with it. Here's Maya Doms. Doms waiting. And finds a teammate outside. Broken up along the far side by the Broncos. Cardinal with its first match played in one week as they beat Loyola Marymount last Sunday, 3-0. First match in 10 days for the Santa Clara Broncos. That was a 1-0 loss at UCLA. They were supposed to play Cal last week, last Sunday, but the Bears had to cancel due to COVID considerations. Yeah. 
Turnbow turns. Sierra Engi with the captain's armband back defensively for the Cardinal. Out wide. Towards the side of the 18. And knocked out of bounds. And I think the use of, of the width by Santa Clara is going to be important today. There's a real strength and an anchor through the middle of the field for Stanford. You're talking about Engie, as you just mentioned, Sierra Engie, that defensive center mid, Naomi Germa, strength as well at that center back. Those are your two captains for Stanford. So if Santa Clara can, can figure out how to change the point, voice, force Kelsey Turnbow into the middle, and then use it from side to side, I think that's where there's going to be some area that they could potentially find some joy. Corner. Off the head in the mixer, and it squirts through for the score. Santa Clara strikes first in the third minute of play, and the Broncos take a 1 0 lead. Katie Meyer, the Cardinal keeper, says, Hey, let's go. Izzy Dequilla, I believe, gets credit for the tally. Well, this is just a great dream start for Santa Clara, especially on the road. First of all, quality service into the box, and it seems to be Alex Loetta who wins that first ball, but Izzy Dequila at the back post is able to poke it in. Dequila with her second goal of the season. To Kennedy Wesley as the Cardinal try to counter. Executing set pieces and defending set pieces. Two main points of pride for Stanford head coach Paul Ratcliffe and this program, but the Broncos notching the early check mark in that box. And the reality for Stanford at this point is, yes, you're down a goal early in the match, but you don't have to panic. There's still plenty of time left to play. Your your tactics and your game plan doesn't need to adjust so much. We'll, we'll talk more about that potentially at halftime or in the second half. But right now, this is where you're relying on your leaders and you're looking to, to Naomi Gurma. You're looking to Sierra Engay to say, okay, let's calm down, let's breathe, let's stick to our game plan, and let's continue to play for this next 87 minutes. That is the first goal that Stanford has conceded at home this year. They have outscored opponents 19 to 1 so far this season now at Kagan. Well, and, and really, when you look at who they've conceded against, it's only been against top ranked teams. The only times they've conceded previously have been to Carolina, who was ranked number two at the time, Duke, who was ranked number five at the time on their recent road trip back east. And those were both 2-1 finals, the North Carolina result in overtime. And Paul Radcliffe, he told us, you know, yeah, I would have loved to have gotten wins and positive results out of each of those respective matches. But those two matches perhaps providing tangible evidence that, yeah, we can actually play with some of the top talent and top programs in the country this year. On the move, Leontini, who gets the start today. Dispossessed, well done. The clear, not quite clean, and then finally finished off. Santa Clara's back line is certainly going to be one unit to watch throughout this match as Jerry Smith, the Broncos head coach, is doing a lot of shuffling there due to health and other availability issues across the back. Yeah, well, first of all, you look in goal, Marley Nicholas out, which means Kylie Fouch is getting the starting nod in goal. Their normal left back, Karen Gore, away at World Cup qualifying duty with Israel. So she'll be replaced by number 30, Emma Reeves, and then Marissa Bubness, number 14, starting at center back. She'll be replacing Eden White, who's going through concussion protocol. So a lot of a lot of changes along the back line. The one line you really want to have some consistency with. But Coach Jerry Smith talked about how deep his team is and how much confidence he has if he has to go in and, and replace a normal starter with somebody off the bench. He feels as if his team can be 18, 19 deep easily. And that's a good position to be in as that ball sails into a sold-out crowd here at Kagan Stadium. Something that Paula Ratcliffe noted with us after all the empty stadiums, which everyone certainly around these parts, we are in Santa Clara County, with all the empty stadiums that a lot of these young ladies played in front of last season. This is certainly a, a welcome sight with all the fans inside the park and even beyond as there are some folks even beyond the, the touchline, the back touchline behind the goal, you see. Meanwhile, for the Stanford lineup, 
And Danielle, you mentioned this earlier, the two defensive captains, Naomi Gurma, and Sierra Angie as well, the holding mid, and Wesley Ke and Kennedy Wesley, who's playing with a broken nose. She has a mask on for this one. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been a, a real foundational piece, the defensive presence of Stanford as they continue to build that confidence on attack. But on attack, they got to get a goal. And I'm looking to the likes right now of Maya Doms, who we talked about. You see her looking to put pressure along that back line of Santa Clara. And then Belle Breedy, who's going to be the one really pressing against that restraining line, number four. She scored two goals in their recent matchup against LMU, looking to do some continued damage against another WCC team. So can this young lady, Andrea Kitahada, freshman from Hillsborough, California, just up the road. Kita Hada has already proven to be a major handful. Skips off of Breedy's foot. The turn, the center towards Kita Hada. Contact in the box. And a corner kick coming up. Good build up play by Stanford up the right flank. Bell Breedy doing well to get to the end line and a good service into the box. An on rushing Kita Hada was well marked there by number 12, Bourgeois for Santa Clara, getting her first start at right back here tonight. Spinning towards the penalty spot. Wesley got a foot on it. The spin, his fouch came off her line a moment. Cardinal get it back. Sent towards Samantha Williams. And settle a bit too hard. Rolls back to Meyer, who will set things up. We saw Kylie Fouch in goal for Santa Clara, the sophomore from Lake Stevens, Washington. And it's going to be her show for the foreseeable future for Santa Clara as Marley Nicholas, their redshirt sophomore keeper, hurt before the UCLA game. And she is going to be on the shelf, it seems, for a while. So you're starting keepers out. You're shuffling everyone along the back line. And you're facing one of the more prolific goal scoring teams, certainly on the West Coast, if not the country. Wesley pressing. Boera clearing. When Stanford at its best, it's playing with a collective rhythm. It's moving the ball and in good flow. Doms. Chipped away by Alyssa Bourgeois. Bourgeois, a sophomore, originally from Maynard, Massachusetts, transferred from Boston U. And you figure this back line and the keeper for the Broncos will be tested throughout this match. You see Wesley wearing the mask and she broke her nose against the University of San Francisco a couple of weeks ago in a collision between her and an attacker as both went up to head the ball and Wesley came down and was the worst for wear for. So she's wearing the mask. It is not easy to wear those either. No. Bounces. Almost beyond aware, but I, she's able to handle it. I had to uh, play with a mask once when I was uh, back at, back in my, my soccer playing days, playing professionally, and it lasted for about three minutes until I got <laughs> frustrated and ripped it off. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't take another elbow to the nose. But you were willing to take that chance. So Wesley wearing the mask. Then again, this is Santa Clara County. They, they haven't messed around with those things here, so there's that. Oh, wait, no. Different kind of mask. Leontini, too hard. Rubenstein can't catch up with it. One of the things you can see from, from Santa Clara, and I think it's important to do against a quality team like Stanford, is be willing to press higher up the field. So often when you, you think of a team like Stanford, their possession, their ability to change the point of attack and move the ball quickly, you think, oh, we just got to play defensive. We got to get numbers behind the ball, sit in, and have them try to play through us. But the reality is, is when you do that, then they can have all the time in the world to pick out the perfect pass, and they're good enough to do it. So I think the strategy that Jerry Smith likes to to, to take when he's playing against Stanford and teams that are of Stanford's quality is to put them under pressure. They can't get comfortable. You have to make sure that they get their heads down and they can't pick out the pass and the possession that they'd like to normally have. It's a blueprint that he's used to beat the Cardinal before, most notably in the 2016 NCAA tournament right here at Kagan. Bit of a shove and Doms gets called for the foul. We're seeing a bit of that special quality out of Maya Doms, her ability to, to take on 1v1. As you mentioned in the open, she's really that boss, that, that 
orchestrator in the midfield, if you will. It's going to be important for her to get onto the ball and really be that playmaker, changing the point of attack, but also generating opportunities on her own, which she's certainly capable of. Dom's had points in four of the first five games of this season. Won Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week honors after scoring a hat trick against Cal State Northridge. Wesley being a bit of a pest. Bounces beyond Dom's. And played forward in the direction of Skylar Smith. Well, for Santa Clara, they've had plenty of scoring chances throughout the course of the season, even especially during tough matches against Virginia and UCLA. In fact, Jerry Smith says, hey, we, we outplayed both of those squads, but we just didn't take advantage of scoring opportunities. And that's been, been his main point of focus for this week heading into this match. Well, and, and in addition to that, the question I have is not only can Santa Clara finish the chances that they create, but who in addition to Izzy Dequila and Kersey, Kelsey Turnbow are going to start to step up? And even Izzy Dequila, who's been managing injury, hasn't been at her best. And so it's a lot easier if you're an opponent of Santa Clara to be able to just have to worry about Kelsey Turnbow, who has really been the major and at times only threat for Santa Clara. That said, Turnbow's been terrific for much of the season. Intercepted by Emma Reeves, a junior from Carmel Valley, California. Playing along that Santa Clara back line. In the middle, played forward, Turnbow, Meyer off her line. And no call as Turnbow goes down in the heat. Well, let's take another look at this one. The throw in down the sideline. But Meyer coming well off of her line and able to knock it away and Turnbull taking the spill. Everyone's all right. Katie Meyer, just such a presence for the Stanford Cardinal. I actually think back to her consistently in that national championship win and her swagger and penalties and how that continues to be a presence for the back line of the Stanford Cardinal. It's so important to have a goalkeeper who's confident, who's vocal. It really does solidify your, your cohesiveness and your confidence knowing that someone behind you can come up with a big save when needed. No doubt about that. Meyer with five saves against North Carolina back on September the 5th. Did not start in that game. Missed the first five minutes. Anson Dorrance during the pregame warm-up said, hey, what kind of earrings is Katie wearing? As Dom says, that one at her feet. Kick saved by Fouch. And a corner kick coming up. Fouch read that one well. Great build-up play by Stanford. Up that right flank. That's where they've had some success here early on in this game. But as you mentioned, Kylie Fouch doing just enough to close the space, get as big as possible, and then a kick save. A left foot from Leontini. Wesley closing in, but it bounces off of a Bronco defender's head. And cleared away on the ground towards Lucy Mitchell. Out of bounds. Santa Clara to throw it in. Anson Dorrance, the North Carolina head coach, during warm-ups between the Cardinal and the Tar Heels, noticed that, that Katie Meyer was wearing some earrings that he kind of deemed a bit potentially unsafe to be worn on the pitch. So Katie had to take out those earrings but could not return in time. I mean, she was already in the starting 11, already on the card, all, already on the lineup card and all of those things, but she could not return in time to get back in to be subbed in at the start of the match. So she actually missed the first five minutes of that match while Ryan Campbell got the start against North Carolina. I mean, I haven't seen the earrings, but that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> you you, you kind of had a feeling That's based some on... some gamesmanship going on yeah, right there. Based on, based on Myers' history with North Carolina that, uh, mm -hmm. that something like that might happen. Turnbo, Meyer, crunch, and the whistle. Well, Turnbow and Meyer have already exchanged pleasantries on a couple of occasions in this match. Meyer, the redshirt junior from Newberry Park, California. 
She was in Soccer Superstar Season 1 on Nickelodeon. You know who the winner of Season 2 was? Alex Loera. The chase towards the touchline, centered beyond Williams' reach. Easy collection for Fouch. Mitchell. Turnbo finds help outside. With Paige Rubenstein guarding. Rolling out of bounds. Cardinal to throw it in. We've talked about the disruption to the back line and the substitutes that, that Jerry Smith has had to go with on that back line. And I really do feel like Stanford needs to continue to press up their right flank. They've had some success already, but really trying to attack number 30, Emma Reeves and Marissa Bubnis. Bubnis typically plays at that outside back position. So not often a central defender here. It's an area that Stanford potentially could exploit. Instead, they try it this side, but you know how to misjudges it. Broncos to throw it in. Bourgeois accepts the honors. Beyond Turnbo to Dequilla, who finds her teammate. Tries to squeeze it forward through three red shirts. And here comes Germa. Germa came forward and scored on a 30-yard laser against Duke. So this is certainly something that's well within her repertoire. She's going to have a bright future far beyond Stanford. I think she'll be highly drafted in the NWSL. I think she has a, a potential bright future even with the U.S. Women's National Team if she continues to improve. She has it now, poked forward, but instead broken up by Loera. Germa, the senior from San Jose on the Mac Herman Trophy watch list, the 2019 Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Matter of fact, the last four Pac-12 Defensive Players of the Year have come from Stanford. Kiki Pickett being the most recent one. What a way of a career she had here on the farm. And even though it didn't end in the NCAA tournament for her, it certainly ended a final play that you and I were in the building for against Cal, which he took it forward. Bounce Savannah Coleman outside. Coleman got the overtime goal to beat the Bears to wrap up Stanford's 2020 season. And their 2020 year was very uncharacteristic. Did not even make the NCAA tournament. And when we spoke with Paul Ratcliffe earlier this week, he talked about how there was a little bit of confidence lost in, in this team and how they're starting to build that confidence back, starting to get more of this attacking flow and rhythm that we've become so accustomed to seeing out of the Stanford Cardinal. And I had a big question today was, which team were we going to see? Were we going to see the likes of leftovers and hangovers from 2020? Or were we going to see the team that we've consistently seen year in and year out, most recently in 2019 when they were national champions. A year of, of broken streaks of sorts for the Cardinal last year, their first time not in the NCAA tournament since 1997. They had a 20 match win streak snapped, also a 28 match home win streak and a 43 match home unbeaten streak snapped last year. They went 42-0-1 during that span, that one tie against Santa Clara here three years ago. One of the things that's different this year for for Stanford is they have a ton of quality players and they and they're very cohesive in that way and relying upon each other but they're really lacking that that special creative artist if you will and you think back to the likes of a Katarina Macario who you talked about previously or Sophia Smith and their scoring and their production has been more diversified they've had to rely on things together in, in a way and perhaps that's beneficial because you can build that cohesiveness and then oh you recruit and you drop in a special player and that's when you have the makings of a national championship run. Leontini couldn't fight through the Bronco back line. Don't forget Savannah Coleman also was injured during the preseason and decided to call it a collegiate career with her health. And Madison Haley whom we haven't seen so far this season as she works her way back from injury. She played in in eight matches in the 2020 spring season, but we haven't seen her to this point. Paul Radcliffe keeps telling us, you know, hey, she's close, she's close. And she's be, being closer and closer every time we chat. Madison Haley certainly can be a major, major talent. So can this young lady too, perhaps, when it's all said and done. 
Nikita Hada, the step over, leaves it for Greedy, but it doesn't have enough to find her. Turnbow versus Germa. This is going to be a dynamite matchup all afternoon. Turnbow on the ground right to Meyer. Yeah, continue to watch that matchup, number two and number 10. I think if Naomi Germer can continue to force Kelsey Turnbow into the midfield as much as possible, force her to play back to goal and ensure that she doesn't get the space she's looking for to be able to turn, that's when the Stanford Cardinal are going to be at their best defensively. If you can allow Kelsey Turnbow to turn and run at you, that's when she's most dangerous because she's quick off the dribble. She can get just the window she needs to be able to get her shot off with a quick release. And that's why she's been such a prolific goal scorer for the Santa Clara Broncos. Four-time first-team All-West Coast Conference. She opened the season with a three-game scoring streak and actually scored against Stanford when these two teams last met in 2019. Fifth-year senior was Washington's Gatorade Player of the Year in back-to-back -back years in high school. Then she moved to Arizona and won the award there, too. Mitchell. Nope. Engie pokes it back. Angie trying to hang in there and win the battle. Dom's almost intercepts. Loera. A bit under the, under the weather today. Finds Menti. Daquila tries to turn. Poke the way of Ani Brandt, the freshman. Whom Paul Ratcliffe has been very impressed with along the back line so far this season. And that one well wide to the left of the cage. I'm a little bit ambitious for Alex Loera. I would have rathered her play out wide. She had number 12, Alyssa Bourgeois, out to the right. Aware of the fifth year senior from Thornton, Colorado, all West Coast Conference preseason team, three time first team all conference. And as mentioned, a, a bit under the weather. It was some doubt as to whether she was going to start in this match. But out there in the, in the starting 11. Glad you're with us as we're past the halfway point of the first half. Troy Clarity and Danielle Slayton. The Broncos ahead 1-0. Izzy Dequilla off a corner kick in the third minute. As you see some folks even outside of the park, people even beyond the fence. Normally that, that fence is, is tarped over, but no, not for this one. Not when you got the Battle of Champions here, man. This is Stanford <laughs> Santa Clara. You let everybody into the tent. Well, and too, I mean, when I pause to think about that, really at a big picture level, you just got to stop and think about the Bay Area and, and women's soccer and not only the top two teams in the country for the past two years and reigning champions, Santa Clara in 2020, Stanford in 2019. But you look at the women's national team players that are pumped out of the Bay Area. You look at even the youth landscape and the number of national champions that you have at the youth level, and you think, man, this is the place to be if you want to be a women's soccer player, whether it's at the youth, collegiate, professional, or even international level. And it's certainly a terrific product as well. Mantini survives the slide tackle from Menti. Brandt keeps it on the ground towards Doms. That's the rhythm that Stanford's looking for. That final pass right there, that one is off. Julia Leontini just couldn't find Bell Breedy, but that's the rhythm that you're looking to see. The up, back, and through, the up, back, and changing out to the wide right or wide left. When Stanford is at its best, that's the flow that they're playing with. And when this team is at its best, they certainly look super fluid. Daquila can too. Tries to find Mitchell, broken up instead, and sent out by the Cardinal. Kennedy Wesley handling the business there. The Quill, the junior from Mission Viejo, California. She was the one who hit the national championship clinching goal in the shootout to beat Florida State, much like Kiki Pickett did for Stanford in 2019. But the Quilla adding her name to that list. And somewhere in that crowd in that North Carolina night, was my broadcast partner, Danielle Slayton, helping to lead the cheers for the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Didn't have much of a voice after that one. That must have been incredibly awesome. It was fun. It was a fun night. You and your teammates in the house. It's funny, though, when you talk with, with Jerry Smith about this season and how quick the turnaround was from 
from the spring season and winning that national championship and how he talks about how his team is perhaps having a little bit of a championship hangover and not playing up to the standard that he'd like to see at moments, particularly players in the midfield. Nice ball towards Williams, bit of contact and a whistle as, yeah, Williams tried to, to take down the defender and the foul goes against Stanford. Samantha Williams, certainly somebody who can threaten in behind. She's got to be careful, though, about sliding into the goalkeeper late. To me, that's worthy of a yellow card. Williams, a sophomore from Laguna Beach, who was terrific. Maybe one of the big revelations for the Cardinal last season. Has been relatively quiet so far this season with just one assist on the board. Danielle, you mentioned Santa Clara perhaps still being in celebration mode. They, they threw out the first pitch of the San Francisco Giants game. They had some big bocce ball tournament. They've got their ring ceremony coming up next month. And these are all generally things that are done during the spring when you're not in an actual competitive season. Yeah, they, they've got to be able to, to really hone in and, and, and focus and, and not lose themselves despite the celebration. And in some ways, Jerry Smith said that playing against Virginia in Virginia and playing against UCLA down in Westwood. Those were the kind of games that he felt his squad needed to kind of snap them back into the reality of it all and saying, hey, you know, you might be the champions right now, but for the 20, that's for the 2020 season. 2021 still to be decided. And I think the, the reality is, is there's been, what, 18 months of adversity for for everyone in the world, quite frankly. And some of those stressors, some of that earth certainty is still going to persist in this season, which is going to require all of these women who are playing, all of the athletes throughout the NCAA to really continue to have that focus and have that discipline that has been demanded of them for the last year and a half. Brady turns, finds Leontini was hunting for Doms, but that one a bit in front of her. And now Turnbow versus Gurman. Stop whatever you're doing and watch. Turnbow stops. Hangs on. Two on one. Mitchell centers. Daquila trying to turn and shield it off, allowing Meyer to collect. Well, that's going to continue to be a tasty matchup watching Naomi Gurma and Kelsey Turnbow go at it. Kelsey Dernbo doing everything she could to get faced up, run at it. But in that moment, Naomi Germa had the discipline. She didn't throw the tackle. She just forced Kelsey Turnbow out wide. And yet still, Santa Clara is able to get a shot off. And so to me, what I'm expecting, and, and as we're seeing, when once we're 30 minutes in here, Stanford's having more of the ball. They're possessing it. But the, the counterattacking moments, the pressing and winning the ball, and immediately attacking by Santa Clara is what has generated the opportunities. And I would say the more dangerous opportunities in, in this first half hour. Substitutions for the Cardinal. Belle, Belle Breedy comes out. Amy Sayer, sophomore from Sydney, Australia, comes in. A couple subs for the Broncos as well. We'll get to those as we go. Doms. Double teamed. Broncos trying to clear. Sayer trying to prevent it. And the whistle goes against Stanford. A couple substitutions for the Broncos. Marika Guay in for Sally Menti, and Skylar Smith comes off. Colby Barnett comes on. Barnett, a freshman from Los Alamitos, and Guay, a sophomore from Quebec. Back to Loera. Bourgeois. Mitchell hustling, trying to fight off Engie. Engie with the dispossession for the moment. Bourgeois swipes in to get it back. And off the hand of Bourgeois, going Stanford's direction as we're just over 30 minutes in here in the first half. Santa Clara leading 1-0. Great to have you with us, Troy Clarity, Danielle Slate. 77 degree afternoon turning to evening on the farm. The 2019 champs versus the 2020 champs. Kita Hada lost her foot, lost her boot, I should say, but she's still going. Gets it back to Brandt. 
perhaps to give herself some time to reclaim her equipment. At Meyer's foot. Germa. People are not happy. Kitahada with both shoes on now. Sayer tries to turn, but it's Bawera who, who wins the race. Kept in by Mitchell. Leontini. Outside, Rubenstein. Tried to get it to Doms, but broken up. Well, Stanford hasn't had a whole lot of room to operate in the attacking third to this point. Finds Turnbow. And long back by the Cardinal. And bounces back to Marissa Bubnis, the sophomore from Carlsbad, California. Mitchell turns, searches for options. It's a good one, but it's Brant with the sweeping slide tackle. Broncos continuing to test and tap and probe and center. But Germa in front of Dequila. You must like your blood. Trying to get it back. Engi hangs on. Sayer versus Loera with help. And Juan by the Broncos. We talked to Troy about the fact that Stanford hasn't had a lot of time to, to be able to play in their attacking third. And the reality is that they haven't been in the attacking third a ton. And, and this game really has been in the middle of the pitch. It's two heavyweight fighters here trying to feel each other out and continue to, to really find a way to break through. The real breakthrough we saw was from Santa Clara, and that's because they earned a set piece opportunity. And when it comes to the run of play, I think the speed of play is decent, but I think it's going to need to be even higher because these two teams are both very organized defensively and doing a good job collectively getting numbers around the ball. Substitutions for both teams, Katie Duong, in for Julia Leontini for Stanford. Jojo Harbor also on the pitch for the first time this afternoon. Harbor, a graduate student from Bellevue, Washington. Kaylee Halverson on the pitch for Santa Clara. She's a senior from Hawaii. Germa, coolly, calmly. Guay. Finally, the left-footed clear bounces into the Bronco bench. Sienna Elmazai also in for the Broncos. Elmazai replacing Turnbow and Sweeney. Nicole Sweeney also in the match. She's replacing Izzy Dequila. Halverson in for Lucy Mitchell. Bouncing down the sideline. Cardinal to throw it in. And Amy Sayer, number 17 for the Stanford Cardinals. It's only been in for, for a few moments, but I already like the impact that she's had on the game. I think she's done a really good job of being able to hold the ball up back to goal. There have been a, quite a few times where Maya Doms has gotten the ball and really just run herself into pressure uh, uh, against the back line of Santa Clara. And I think Amy Sayer and her movement and also her ability to possess and... and, and to play make, if you will, even though she's along that front line, is going to be a good combination. And I'd like to see her and Doms get together more and see if they can't play it off each other. Yeah, certainly Doms with a lot of international experience. She's originally from Sydney, Australia, has played with the Australian national team. And also scored her first career goal against Loyola Marymount last week. That's the back to pressure ball that she needs to get to her feet and that uh, Kennedy Wesley didn't deliver. But Sayer has it now. Waiting, squeezing. Hinahata fighting for it, dispossessed. And finally taken away by Santa Clara. Cardinal unable to get off a shot in that instance. Kitahada 
waiting. Pulled forward, shot, score! Katie Duong, her first score in a Stanford uniform. Off a of first touch ball, ties it up in the 36th minute. Katie Duong with just a perfectly timed run in behind. Andrea Kitahara really getting the build-up play in this one. Santa Clara doing a pretty good job of limiting Stanford, Stanford's ability to get in behind, but Katie Duong gets that one all right. Kitahara dishing off. And Stanford has the ability to really penetrate that back line of Santa Clara centrally for the first time here tonight. Duong, the junior transfer from the University of Minnesota, originally from Portland, Oregon. And Andrea Kitahata with her fifth assist of the season. That leads the Stanford Cardinal squad. So the Cardinal with the equalizer. Sayer. Engi. Dom's turns. Cardinal complete the switch to the far side. Now a ball aimed towards Harbor, not quite enough on it. And we'll see how this changes things for both sides. Now sitting at 1-1 after 36 minutes. Paul Ratcliffe talked about the importance of, of controlling one's emotions in a game like this. This is a, a huge rivalry between these two teams, two familiar foes. And, and he talked about how it's a challenge to be able to control your emotions and really execute play. You want to play with that grit and that fight, but you also have to play with that calmness and the ability to execute play consistently over the course of 90 minutes. And I got to say, I can't think of a bigger non-conference rivalry than these two teams when it comes to women's soccer in the United States and collegiately. And Ratcliffe says, you know, we know them, they know us. But how can you control it? and play well. One thing that Ratcliffe would love to see his team do is create and finish chances. Stanford able to do that just a few minutes ago, getting the equalizer in the 36th minute. There's Paul in his 19th year as the head coach at Stanford. And let's take another look at the goal, Kitahata setting up Duong beautifully. And it's just a really simple play by Kitahara there. And Alex Loetta looking to co provide cover, but gets caught watching the ball and doesn't see Duong running in behind. Very simple, direct finish, if you will, or direct pass and finish, if you will, from the Stanford Cardinal. Paul Radcliffe and Jerry Smith go back a long ways, of course, before coming to Stanford to become the head coach. Here on the farm, Radcliffe ran the program at St. Mary's across the bay, also a West Coast Conference school. He told us a story about the first time that he met Jerry Smith in a competitive setting against Santa Clara. And he said, look, we were down like 8-0 at the half, and we were in the locker room at the halftime, and the referees had to knock on the door and ask us if he wanted to come back out. And I said, Paul's like, I could catch. We kind of thought about it. We're, we might be even safer in here. <laughs> but a few years later, that scoreline was 1-0 Santa Clara. He had coached St. Mary's tremendously well. He had recruited tremendously well, and his success is part of the reason why he got the job here at Stanford. After just three or four years at St. Mary's, he really did change that program around. I'd say it's worked out well for Paul Ratcliffe and Stanford since those two joined forces. Three national championships. Numerous Pac-10, Pac-12 championships. Numerous players going on to play for the U.S. Women's National Team. Yes, ma'am. Various women's national teams all over the world, quite frankly. Sayer has a little bit of space. Duong, the left foot poke. He's hunting for Doms, but Fouch wins it. Flag up on the far side, it's offside. Ali Fouch, the sophomore, credited with just one save to this point this afternoon, and it's going to be her show in, in the net for the foreseeable future for the Broncos.
Engie outside. Give and go. We play on. Aiming for Halverson. Halverson coming off the bench for the first time this season. She had started all seven matches coming into this one. We asked Jerry Smith which players need to step up, and Halverson was on the list. Sally Menti, who got the start today, she was on the list as well. Halverson takes a spill with a little assist from Doms. That's why this will, that's why this will be a free kick for Santa Clara. And that's one of the questions I had coming into to this game, not just for Santa Clara, who was going to step up. Jerry Smith did mention players, all of whom are in the midfield, and that's the question I have. Who is going to win the midfield today? Which team is going to dominate that area of the pitch? Yes, we could see moments of brilliance from the Kelsey Turnbow or along the front line. I think Amy Sayer has been having a great game, but to me, that area of the pitch, who's going to control the game? Who's going to possess better? Who's going to force the other team to have to run more and to chase more frequently? I think that's going to ultimately be the deciding factor when it comes to who can come out on top here tonight. And Halverson can certainly help be that player. Non-stop motor, relentless. Out of bounds, Broncos to throw it in. Broncos wins so far this season have come against San Jose State, Cal State Fullerton, and Virginia Tech. They've already played two top five teams in Virginia and UCLA. Played them well, but could not get positive results in the win-loss column there. But those are the kind of games that both of these teams need when it comes to non-conference play. Both of these teams are going to be here at the end of the season come NCAA tournament time. So it's about getting tough competition to prepare for those games, not only later on in the conference, but when the teams, both of these teams, advance ultimately to the NCAA tournament, which I expect them to do. Yeah, this way, I would think that you would see both of these squads in the postseason. I mean, we could see both of these teams in the Final Four, quite frankly. Sure. And I thought it was telling when Stanford did drop both of those games to Duke and North Carolina. They only fell one spot in the polls from 10 to 11 after that week. Now the Cardinal back up to 10. Kodonezu had it for a moment. And finally, a late whistle with the contact along the far side. And a free kick coming up. Maya Doms heads into the book. Well, coming up at the half, we will show you one of the more special places on the athletic corner of the Stanford campus, one that has produced many Olympians over the years. Not Kagan Stadium. You'll learn more about that coming up at the half. The chase is on, Brant and Engie. Broncos to throw it in, closing in on two minutes to go first half. And it's been a solid first half by both teams. I think both Paul Ratcliffe and Jerry Smith will be relatively happy with the way their teams have performed in the first 45. I thought defensively, both teams have been pretty good, save for a few small errors here and there, which is normal things that happen within the course of a game. But I think the, the possession for Stanford can continue to improve. I think that's how they break down teams best. And I think Santa Clara needs to continue to press high, needs to continue to be able to, to win the ball higher up the pitch and then look to quickly transition, getting not only Kelsey Turnbow or Izzy Daquila involved, but can they get their midfielders involved? I'd like to see Sally Menti in particular get higher up the field. Lucy Mitchell, I think, had some moments early on in the game, too. 
We've already talked about um, Kaylee Halverson and how she's had an impact and how she has the potential to have an impact for the Santa Clara Broncos. One minute to go. One minute remaining and it more. seems like this, what we've seen the first 44 plus minutes now is a good representation of where these teams seem to be right now at this point in the season. And this is your last game for both of these sides before you head into conference play. So you're really trying to, to hone in, to check all the boxes, to get focused for the Pac-12 or WCC season, which ultimately will prepare you and propel you towards that ultimate goal, which is hoisting yet another national championship trophy, something both of these two teams are very familiar with. Santa Clara was picked to win the West Coast Conference. Got eight first place votes in that poll. Stanford picked third behind UCLA and USC. Ball sails beyond Germa. Helps shield off the, defend, uh, the attacker. Brant on the ground to Doms. One. Aiming for Harbor, but time runs out here in the first half. And the first 45 minutes of this match, well played as you would expect between these two teams. Izzy Dequila in the third minute gets it in off the corner kick. And Katie Duong with the equalizer in the 36th minute. Put it together and both these squads are tied at one apiece. Yeah, it's been a, an equal match. I think the results thus far has been telling of how it's been a little bit of a back and forth affair. Most of the play in the central part of the field, who's going to be that special player who can get the breakthrough? We will find out potentially in the second half, which is coming up in just a few moments. This battle of champions so far has been a pretty good one. Santa Clara won. Stanford won. Halftime festivities coming up in just a moment. Sunday evening on the farm as the sun starts to set just beyond the quad and the coastal foothills behind the Stanford campus. We're about to get things going here at Kagan Stadium for the start of the second half. 11th ranked Santa Clara Broncos and the 10th ranked Stanford Cardinal are tied at one apiece. Tequila in the third minute, Duong in the 36th minute for the Broncos and the Cardinal respectively. And Danielle, you and I were just just talking briefly, an intriguing first 45 minutes for both respect for, for, for both benches respectively. Santa Clara going six deep and Stanford getting their goal off the bench. Yeah, San Santa Clara going six deep, as you mentioned, and Jerry Smith talking about how this is one of the deepest squads he's ever had. On the flip side, Paul Ratcliffe told us that he's got a little bit of a shorter roster here this season, as you mentioned, managing injury and, and perhaps some departure of players early are on than expected, and thus, only having three subs used off of the bench here, but as you mentioned, Katie Duong with the goal off the bench. You see Sierra Angie and Naomi Gurma helping to hold things down defensively for the Cardinal. They will be tested, you would imagine, many more times once again in the second half. Wow. Santa Clara's makeshift backline has, has had some moments so far in the first 45 minutes. Sally Menti, can she step up? Along with Makoto Nezu and the rest of the Broncos. That's only the half of it. But the second half is underway. Troy Clarity and Danielle Slayton. Stanford versus Santa Clara in the broadcast booth and on the pitch as well. Katie Meyer with one save so far in this one. As Menti with the bump off of Engie. Williams tries to win it back. Tickling along the near sideline. To Doms. Great to have you with us in this battle of champions. Stanford champions in 2017 and 2019 most recently. Santa Clara wears the crown right now. Bell Breedy outside the 18. Met by two white shirts, but keeps it alive. Will they continue the switch? Yes, Rubenstein towards the back post. Spilled off of Fouch. Can Breedy get it out of her foot? No. Loera tries to clean it up and does. Meanwhile, an injured Bronco back inside the six. A good idea by Stanford is Rubenstein with the poke. 
That bent towards the back post, but Stanford couldn't quite get off a clean shot as Fouch was able to punch it away. Just a great build-up play. That's when you see Stanford, what they want to do. They want to increase numbers in the attack by sending those outside backs forward. And if you think back to years past, who do you envision? You envision Kiki Pickett in that mm -hmm. role, flying up the right flank. Rubenstein here, Paige Rubenstein coming up that right side. I would have actually been okay if she had opted to shoot that one herself, but choosing to go with the service across, Stanford just unable to get onto the end of it. I believe that was Alyssa Bourgeois who was down for a moment or so, but she is okay. Paul Ratcliffe and the Cardinal Coaching Brain Trust looking on. It does seem kind of strange watching Stanford play without Kiki Pickett roaming that outside back position just from front to back and just how, how masterful she was. It'll be fun to continue to watch her play. Yes, indeed. At the professional level. Daquila, too. Same with, yeah, some of these, some of these players here who have already actually been drafted into the NWSL. You look at Alex Loetta, who will be headed off to Kansas City. Kelsey Turnbow, drafted by the Chicago Red Stars, as was Madison Haley with the Chicago Red Stars. So those two potential teammates here starting next spring. And Haley, despite getting drafted, decided to come back and complete her graduate degree here at Stanford. Here is Doms. Loera on the spot. Doms gets it back. She can let loose from distance. I don't think she quite has the room here. Well, we're making sure of that. Out to Williams. Williams splits the defense. So savvy. Centers. Leontini off of Brady's foot. Off the crossbar. Kita Hada tries to give the Cardinal a second chance. But Santa Clara survives that one with help from the iron. And Samantha Williams so good off the dribble and responsible for generating that cross. She's very, very much right footed. So Santa Clara's got to do a better chance or better job of forcing her to that left foot. But how about that getting her head up and just a perfectly played ball across to Julia Leontini. Unfortunate for the Cardinal that they're unable to sneak that one in the net pinging off the crossbar instead. Brady so close to her fifth goal of the season. Rubenstein centers, no. Moera, opportunistic as usual. She continues to be the anchor for Santa Clara across the back. Engie, poke back to Germa. Anticipatory, bourgeois, far side, Mitchell. Back towards Bourgeois, now Turnbow. Poked in the corner. Waiting, Menti. Put the flag up, offside. And Sally Menti says, what, are you serious? Really? Stanford getting off to a very good start here in the first five minutes. Santa Clara thought they might have been able to, to break that momentum with his opportunity by Sally Menti. But the offside flag goes up. That timing just not quite right for Santa Clara. And getting timing down on Santa Clara's attack has been a bit of a work in progress. Yes, they have Daquila, and yes, they have Turnbow as well, but Daquila nursing an injury, and she hasn't been able to practice more often than not. She still needs to get in the rhythm and stay in that rhythm with herself and, and her teammates as well. That just hasn't been able to to be a part of the process for much of this season to this point. Yeah, and and when you look at the two front of the Santa Clara Broncos in Kelsey Turnbow and Izzy Daquila, it's been really what we call like a one plus one equals three situation. It's the strength of Turnbow, the strength of Daquila, plus their chemistry and cohesiveness together. Aiming towards Daquila off of Turnbow's leg and taken by Meyer. And they both make the same run. In that instance, that service into the box by Alex Loetta. But normally, if one is checking two, the other is going in behind. And it's so difficult to defend because not only are, is their movement complementary, but they have different styles. Kelsey Turnbow, very good on the dribble, very good at speed. Izzy Daquila, better when she's playing back to goal, can get faced up, but uses her strength and her body well. 
Willa turns, finds a teammate, Menti chipped away by Gurman. And they're just always looking for each other. They play close together, and, and that chemistry and cohesiveness is part of the strength of a good two front. When they're playing next to each other and they can play off of each other, that's why Jerry Smith opts to go with this 4-4-2 formation typically. That being said, as much fun as the Izzy and Kelsey show can be to watch, he wants more people to step up in a scoring standpoint. Menti being one of them, but instead she has that one cleared out for the whistle. And on the flip side for Stanford, you've seen moments where Belle Breedy and Maya Doms have had a bit of that, that combination. They have looked for each other. Maya Doms playing a little bit more withdrawn, so more of an attacking center mid or withdrawn forward. But I think the better combination that they can continue to get throughout the course of this season, the better it will bode for Stanford. There's been some good moments, but have been more individual than I would like to see. And I think if you can get those two playing together in the way that we've seen Kelsey Turnbow and Izzy Dequilla do, the, the, the better it will bode for Stanford as they head into the Pac-12 season. Which is just around the corner. Matter of fact, it's, it's almost here. It will be here in five days. Stanford hosting Utah to begin the conference slate. An old friend comes back to the farm, Hideki Nakata. Stanford associate head coach is now the head coach for the Utes. Brady has it. Brady puts it through, kicked away by Fouch, who had come way off her line and was trying to recover and just did. Great opportunistic moment there by Stanford. Santa Clara scrambling, getting this all wrong. First of all, it's the turnover there. Poor pass by Alex Loetta. Bell Brady does well to intercept. And as you mentioned, Kylie Fouch bit off of her line there, just gets the kick save at the last moment. Left foot, headed up. Bubness. Williams. Gotta force her to her left foot. And back to Engi. Well, a couple weeks ago, Stanford beat San Francisco 1-0. Could have been 2-0, but the Dons saved a ball off the line in the 90th minute. And that was a really tough, hard-fought win for the Cardinal as they were coming off of that road trip to Duke in North Carolina. Perhaps still a bit fatigued. They certainly didn't look as sharp as they had, particularly against Cal State Northridge and San Diego State. But give credit to the Dons that night for what they are able to do defensively. The Cardinal didn't really get much. In fact, the one goal that they got was, it wasn't a breakaway or anything like that. It was just kind of off a rebound. And that was all Stanford needed. And Paul Ratcliffe did talk about how, how fatigued his team was, both mentally and physically. But as you mentioned, the Stanford Cardinal opting to play quite a few WCC opponents, LMU, USF, Santa Clara as well. Santa Clara on the flip side opting to, to play quite a few Pac-12 opponents yep. in Cal, UCLA, Stanford, all, all on their schedule in the non-conference season. Broncos and the Bears played to a 1-1 draw on August the 22nd. You called that match on the Pac-12 Network, Danielle. I was in the building for that one, too. I was on the opposite side of Edwards Stadium. It's nice to be a fan sometimes. Not bad, not bad. It was a great atmosphere, though. Great atmosphere here, too. It sold out Kagan Stadium. Rubenstein poking away the ball. The Broncos getting it back. Daquila showing for it. It's coming her way. Has that her foot cleared out by the Cardinal. Approaching Car Emma Reeves right on frame to Katie Meyer. And that's a great starting position by Emma Reeves. She's playing left back for Santa Clara, but you can see her hovering in the midfield, even hovering in the edge of the attacking third. And her starting position is what allows her to get to that ball and really keep that ball an opportunity alive for the Broncos. Out of bounds, Santa Clara to throw it in. Broncos were supposed to play the Bears again last week, but that did not go off as planned as Cal had to cancel that game due to COVID-19 issues within that program that have since been solved. Last I saw, the Bears were up 2-0 on Long Beach State. Late in that match, they were playing it down that way. But Jerry Smith 
in some ways perhaps not too displeased with that development with there being 10 games to be played between matches because he was finally able to get three good solid practices in in the run-up to this match. And it's been pretty difficult playing two games a week. Plus, they also had eight players in COVID protocol during the preseason as well. So it's been a bit tough as Engie with the tackle from behind. Well, and the rhythm that has become standard practice in women's soccer is that you play on Thursday and Sunday. When I was playing back in the day, you played Friday, Sunday. So there was the challenge of that quick turnaround. But now you have the challenge that you can't ever have a good, solid one or two days of training, perhaps on a Monday or Tuesday, because you're immediately recovering and then you're immediately heading into that next game, which is now a little bit earlier. So as you mentioned, very difficult. Aiming towards D'Aquila, punched away Meyer. Can Reeves turn? Brandt fighting. And now the whistle finally blows. With Brandt and Emma Reeves getting locked up. Should mention Sally Menti was the Bronco who's down for a moment, but she is okay. And Danielle, it's, it's been a common coach's lament as you and I have both talked to numerous coaches throughout the season over the years. And they always say, look, during the season, we can't get any teaching or any development done. It's just more about maintenance and recovery and getting ready for the next match. Which, which to me is even harder this year because you didn't have a spring season. And right. so you didn't have that opportunity to, to develop last year because you were playing your regular season in the spring. And so there's real challenges around cohesiveness, around development of players, around experience, because you lost that in the spring of 2020. Bolera, she's been busy. Towards Nezu. Wombach back by Stanford. Engie's been a bit all over the place too. Brady, who hit the crossbar about nine minutes ago of game time. Back to Kitahata, who has an assist so far this afternoon. Wesley with the broken nose and all, still playing. So for that broken nose a couple weeks ago. Brady tried to turn. It wasn't quite there. It was lucky to get it back. Tries to switch to Rubenstein. Can't get the squeeze. Skylar Smith in the right place at the right time. Smith was showing for the ball ahead of everyone, but it didn't come her way. Perhaps a bit untidy passing sequence there for the Broncos. Reeves almost returned the favor. Bourgeois with Dom's chasing. Intercepted again. Wesley in the corner. Who's it off of? Santa Clara. Corner kick coming up for the card. For the most part, it seems like much of this match has been played in the midfield. And that's because you get two equally matched teams, both high quality teams. Good defenses who have been sound. And really, it's going to come down to one mistake, one big breakthrough, one moment of brilliance. So often does, especially between these two teams. In the air, beyond Fouch, trying to clear it off the line, and does. Loera. Can the Cardinal return? Engie on a bounce right to Fouch. Now, Engie was in the shadows. When Fouch grabbed that ball, she was in the sun like she is now. That might bear watching as this match goes along for the next few minutes or so. D'Aquila. Turnbow. D'Aquila. Gurma in pursuit, trying to find Turnbow. Wesley, and cleared by Engie. Well played by the Cardinal defensively. Wesley was down on a knee for a brief moment, but was able to get back up to her feet. The officials stop play as, as Wesley is coming off. And JoJo Harbor is coming back into the match. 
Well, this was the similar situation against the Dons for Stanford a couple weeks ago after Wesley was injured in what turned out to be a broken nose. JoJo Harbor came on and made her first appearance of the season, ended up scoring the game's lone goal just a few minutes later. But Wesley being worked on on the Stanford bench on the far side. And she immediately came off, took off her shoe. Trainers looking at that right foot. Retaping an ankle, perhaps. That appears to be the case. Just over 60 minutes in here on the farm, Troy Clarity, Danielle Slayton, Santa Clara and Stanford tied at one apiece. A game that, to this point, has, for the most part, matched the billing. Doms offside. Not by much, though. I thought that was a good ball by Stanford. Yeah. You're right. I mean, I, when I looked at it, she looked to be onside to me when the ball was played. But the assistant referee, no hesitation with raising her flag. Assistant ref has the down the line look that perhaps we don't here in the broadcast booth. So we'll, de we'll, we'll defer. Not like our opinion matters much in that respect anyway, <laughs> but still. Harbor had it for a brief second. Cardinal on the move. Good ball. Brady versus Loera. Can't hang on to the touch. But Stanford having a few moments where they're able, the, the final pass hasn't been there, but they've been able to, to try to come close to springing in players behind, particularly Bell Brady a few times in this second half. And part of that reason is because Santa Clara is not doing as good of a job of getting pressure on the ball in midfield. And so those through passes and slip passes have been able to be executed more in this half than they were in the first. Yeah, certainly in the last 10 minutes, especially it seems. It's a good turn right there by Sally Menti. But the question is, is when she breaks that pass and, and they break that line, that midfield line of Stanford, can they choose those moments to go forward rather than just possessing entirely? Bourgeois still going. Dom's finally helped settle the issue, but the Broncos maintain possession. In the air, Brandt. Turnbow can't find it. Germa can as usual. Now towards Kitahata, survives one slide tackle. Ball knocked out of bounds and into the Stanford training room along the far side. Andrea Kitahata has been good. Yeah. She's been solid here, here today. And when we talked to Paul Ratcliffe about her. That one's headed towards Williams, but bumped off immediately. And he talked about just how she's been such a pleasant surprise and made such an impact early on in her freshman year. Somebody who will get the pleasure of watching for, for three more years here on the farm. One assist today, give her five on the season. That's a Cardinal team high, Kita Hada. We'll be watching her for, for years to come. She actually also played squash, was ranked as high as number four. Her brother Garrett plays squash at Cal. So that might be a, a household divided when the Cardinal meet the Bears on November the 6th to close out the regular season. Stanford versus Cal always tends to mean a little something. So does Stanford Santa Clara. Kitahata. And he perhaps not quite anticipating that pass a bit. Turnbow with Germa in hot pursuit. Turnbow using the footwork. Is she going to let loose? Bounces beyond. And Williams sends it out of bounds. Just a great job right there by Kelsey Turnbow to get faced up and get that cross off. Despite two Cardinal defenders hanging on her. Santa Clara has to do a better job of getting numbers into the box when that service does indeed arrive. 
Substitutions as Amy Sayer returns to the pitch for the Cardinal, placing Bell Brady. Madison Eisen in for Andrea Kitahata. Eisen, a junior from Rockland, California. And Carly Reeves replacing Elise, Alyssa Bourgeois for the Broncos. Sayer, whom you were impressed with, it seemed, in <laughs> the first half. And I still half. am. I mean, I think her, her tactical acuity and her decision-making on the ball has been very good. Even though she's a forward, she has the vision of a number 10 and a playmaker. And I think that's been a real asset and a weapon for the Stanford Cardinal. I think she was my, my, my favorite player to watch in the first half, and Belle Breedy had quite a few bright spots here in the second. Those two players have really stood out to me. A look out here. Germa swooping in to save the day. Good recovery by Germa. Bubnis plays it back to Fouch with Williams pursuing. We're able to find Emma Reeves. Typical Naomi Germa play on the other end. It appeared that that might potentially be problematic for the Cardinal, but Germa, no problem. Swooping in, making the play, clearing it. It's just what she does. Out of Turnbow's reach. And played back to Meyer. Bouncing out of bounds. And the Cardinal to throw it in. I was joking with Paul Ratcliffe before the match. I said, hey, with all these, all these championships between these two teams, maybe everyone should put their respective trophies on their benches for this one. <laughs> that would have been kind of cool. And he just kind of laughed and said, look, we're, we're living in the present. Typical coach's answer, but I understand where he's coming from, from that perspective. Just show up with all those rings on your fingers. You'd be fine. <laughs> Rubenstein keeps it in bounds, but instead it rolls to a white shirt. Nezu. Daquila. Doms. Guerrero wins that battle. She's won several in this match. Skylar Smith pokes it past wide of the net. Close call for the Broncos. Another opportunity by Santa Clara earned because they're pressing and winning the ball high up the pitch. Makoto Nezu is helping the team possess and then Alex Loetta is the one who wins that tackle, immediately plays the ball forward. And Skylar Smith has the ability to, to get close, but can't quite get there. As we see this through ball in by Santa Clara, well-timed run, and oh, Skylar Smith's gonna want that one back. Just yeah. six inches wide, gotta get that one on frame. Katie Meyer does well to just kind of come out and be as big as possible. She's scrambling, but her presence there perhaps is just what prevented Skylar Smith from able from being able to get that one on frame? Well, and another critical scoring chance for the Broncos going by the wayside, and that appears to be the story for the most part for the Broncos against top-notch competition. Jerry Smith said he's been pleased with his team's ability to create chances, but has been far from pleased with their finishing. They hit the post twice and the crossbar once against Virginia. Outshot the Bruins last week, or a couple weeks ago, I should say. Hard tackle in the midfield. Everyone's okay. Harbor gets back up for the Cardinal. But both of these coaches are going to feel like they, they had at least one quality missed opportunity. You think back to the, the Bell Breedy chance that went off the crossbar 10 minutes ago or so. She should have put that one away, as should have Skylar Smith. Let's see what Doms does here. Now marked a bit more closely, the touch to get a bit more room. Tripped up by Emma Reeves, no call, out of bounds. And a corner kick for the Cardinal. And I do like Maya Dom's determination and her, her courage to be able to go forward and look to take on players on the dribble, but I feel like sometimes she runs and she puts herself under pressure. I'd like to see her perhaps be able to take that first player on and then get her head up and look to dish off to a player, a teammate to her right or left. 
Dom's all Pac-12 second team last year. A substitution for the Cardinal, Leontini off. And the Cardinals goal scorer so far today, Katie Duong back in. Harbor to take the corner kick. Left foot, spinning back post. Germa saved away by Fouch. Germa just got a foot on it, maybe not quite enough, and Fouch was able to scramble and get it back before it crossed. And we've talked about how Marley Nicholas, the normal goalkeeper, normal starter for Santa Clara Broncos is out being replaced by Kylie Fouch. And Kylie Fouch has been a little bit hesitant to come off of her line on those corner kicks. Dequilla, a bomb on frame right to Meyer. If I'm the Stanford Cardinal, I'm gonna continue to, to really put that ball in tight. Challenge Kylie Fouch. Sayer in pursuit. Wera handles it easily, and Fouch uses her foot. Dom's trying to win it back for the Cardinal. And it finally comes on. <laughs> but how about that for Kylie Fouch, your first two starts, UCLA and Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> Tall order. In the box, Sayer right on frame. Well, Fouch has, for the most part, responded to the challenge so far. Yeah, she's been solid back there, and I think time and experience will only benefit her. Fouch wants to be a neurosurgeon. I'm sure that's also a profession that takes steady nerves and calm and coming through in the clutch, too. Sayer can't quite catch up with it. Paul Ratcliffe told us about how he's really working with his team and he feels as if the team needs to continue to improve in all aspects of the game, but really when it comes to possession and, and the attacking side, it, it was his area of focus. Starting to see that come, come out here in moments for the Stanford Cardinal in the second half. Sayer, nope, too hard of a touch. Both of these teams with uncharacteristic and very difficult seasons. Dobbs splits the fence, shoots blocked by the Broncos. Bubna saving the day perhaps for Santa Clara. And Mitchell down the far side. And Stanford to throw it in. Well, the calls are coming closer, it seems, for both teams here in the second half. Santa Clara weathering the storm a bit, a big time block right there by Marissa Dubness, Bubness, excuse me, coming over at the last minute. And Maya Doms, I think, makes the right decision there. As I've mentioned, sometimes she puts herself under too much pressure, but when she's got one player to defend or, or one player to beat, one defender to beat, take it on and look at what happens. Here's Rubenstein. <laughs> Trying to shake one. Now shaking two, center off of Doms' foot. Sayer can't turn around quickly enough. Harbor in the air towards Doms. Spills off of Fouch, Doms! First of all, a little bit surprised that the referee didn't blow his whistle when Kylie Fouch goes up for that. I think he's called, he, He's called a pretty tight game when it comes to those kind of things, so surprising there. And Stanford continuing to create chances, continuing to create opportunities, but haven't really been able to get on the end of the crosses that they've had. Perhaps something to focus on for Paul Ratcliffe before they head into conference play against Utah in just five short days. Another corner for the Cardinal. Duong. One of the few Parts of the pitch that is still bathed in sunlight. Right foot, front post, Sayer, After minutes of knocking, the Cardinal finally come in and take the lead. Amy Sayer off the corner. Stanford two, Santa Clara one.
Stanford has been on the front foot, earning this corner kick. Great service in inside the six yard box. Kylie Fouch on her line. And how about that? Amy Sayer climbing the ladder, heads that one perfectly down to the far post. She's been a real bright spot for me over the course of this game for Stanford and is finally rewarded with a goal. Sayer has now scored in back to back matches. And Katie Duong now with an assist to go along with her goal from earlier in this match. 75 minutes in, as the Cardinal have just taken a 2-1 lead over Santa Clara. The snap header from Sayer, a thing of beauty. And Duong getting a bit mixed up on the far side. Amy Sayer from Sydney, Australia, with experience on the Australian national team. And that country's been good to Stanford of late. BD Go put together a pretty good career for the Cardinal during her time here on the farm. And internationally, Australia is going to be really good going forward. Mm -hmm. Fourth in the Olympic Games, losing to the United States. Host, co-host of the World Cup in just a couple of years, 2023. Well, if you're Santa Clara, given the score, given when it came, and given how much time is left, anything changed for you here going forward? Yeah, you, you got 15 minutes left, which means you don't need to panic, but you need to play a, a little bit more decisively and a little bit more directly at times. I think the biggest difference for me is that I need to see them press higher up the field and press closer in midfield than we've seen them play in the second half. And now particularly because you're down by a goal you need to win the ball back and see if you can't go forward quickly. Their best moments have been counterattacking moments and moments in transition. Too strong. That sails long and goes out of bounds. Stanford's 2020 season, just 6-6-2. Six, six and two. As they suffered injuries throughout, could not train properly before the season. Something that Santa Clara certainly knows a lot about as Andrea Kitahada comes back into the match. Santa Clara and Stanford were supposed to open up the season last year, February 14th, but that didn't happen. Santa Clara had just gotten back to practicing in late January. And perhaps a bit too, too late for them to feel comfortable playing on February the 14th, so that game got scrapped. And Santa Clara certainly with their issues Leading up to the season last year, they had no spring season, obviously. Barely had a fall season. And apparently that fall season didn't go very well. The players really struggled. Jerry Smith admitted he really struggled as well. Got a call from their athletic department, from their athletic director saying, hey, Santa Cruz might be able to train down there in early January. Jerry Smith declined. Got the phone call in late January and said they were go for a spring season. That happened, not without some hitches. They had a month between the end of the regular season and the NCAA, re NCAA tournament, but it all ended with a national championship. Here is the approach. Here is the shot. And actually, that was well wide, maybe a bit mishit. I believe that was Harbor who got a foot on it. Rubenstein trying to find some room. Centers and on the line and out along the touchline. Santa Clara beating five Power Five schools coming into the NCAA tournament as an 11 seed. And in a season that Jerry Smith in many ways describes as an absolute nightmare, what a dream ending. Well, it really was a, a, a remarkable win, a remarkable championship in what can only be said as a remarkable and unprecedented year. Credit goes to this team who really has become very gritty demonstrated their resilience throughout the course of 2020. But the question is, is can they continue to have that grit, but also this focus and also this, this play. Turnbo, right to mine. And an, an improvement in 2021. I think if you can put the recipe together, bodes well for, for this season. Santa Clara has not lost many players, only losing Sophia Jones and Julie Doyle. Turbo, Turnbow needing a moment to kind of stretch out here a bit. In, in that last sequence, Danielle, there were not too many white shirts down that way and a whole lot of red shirts. 
Well, and, and Stanford's doing exactly what they need to do, right? They need to get players below the ball, behind the ball. They need to defend together. They also need to keep the ball. I mean, 10 minutes left to go. You're starting to slow down the pace of the game. You're making sure that you don't take any unnecessary risks. You'd be very content for Santa Clara to possess the ball, but do so in their own half. On the flip side for Santa Clara, they've got to play a little bit more urgently in this final 10 minutes if they are to try to search for that equalizer. But as Jerry Smith has commented, he, he's happy with his team's ability to create chances. It's a matter of them finishing. And quite frankly, when you think back to, to last season. Doms, but it's loose, deflected, and out of bounds. And you, and you think back to the way they even played in the final against Florida State. They were outplayed for much of that game. They were down a goal and yet found a way on the foot of Kelsey Turnbow. So perhaps looking for a little bit of that magic here again tonight. But Stanford has been the better team in this second half, has created more chances. Santa Clara been on the ropes just a bit here. Cardinal cashed in on their last corner kick opportunity. Duong to start this one off as well. Towards the top of the 18. Angie, no, nope, blocked. Halverson working hard. Spinning out of bounds. Hmm. Closing in on 10 minutes remaining in regulation. Julia Leontini coming back into the match, replacing Katie Duong with a goal and an assist to her credit. So look at Katie Halverson. She would have been Santa Clara's next shooter in the penalty kick situation in the national championship game had Daquilla not been able to connect. Her services were not needed. I'm sure she was okay with that. I'm sure that, that she was ready. <laughs> she, she found herself at peace with that development pretty quickly. <laughs> well, here's Turnbow. Turnbow, the hard touch. Brandt with Germa trying to recover and forcing it outside. That's just great defending by Ivani Brandt. You don't maybe notice it as much because she doesn't have to come in and have a late slide tackle and, and huge heroics. But the fact that she's able to play off enough of Kelsey Turnbow, Kelsey Turnbow takes that long touch and then she just puts her body in between Turnbow and the ball and is able to shield her away. That's great defending by a young Ivani Brandt. Freshman. Shot punched away by Meyer. I believe that was Turnbow at the top of the 18 who gave it the crack. Of course it was Turnbow. She always <laughs> seems to find herself around the ball. She goes to where the ball is going to be. She creates chances. She puts herself in good spots, and that's part of what makes her so dangerous. At age four, her first ever soccer practice ended when she stormed off the field. She gave soccer another chance a year later. It took. Here she is now. High. Beyond the penalty spot, Dom's fighting forward in the mix, trying to turn and send it back. Poked, wide left, Loera. Toe poke, a highly underrated type of shot in my opinion. And I'm totally serious. I mean, so difficult for a goalkeeper to read. Your lower leg snap, you just get a little toe in there. Sometimes that's just the window, just the space that you need to be able to get something. I'd imagine they also might do some funky things with the spin of the ball mm -hmm. as well. Little knuckling action there, potentially. Well won by Nezu for Santa Clara. But can Stanford get a hold of the ball now? As good as they've been in the second half, Santa Clara trying to press. Center blocked by Germa. Corner kick for the Broncos. It's been a good response by Santa Clara. In these last few minutes, really generating some momentum here. Trying to take that away from Stanford, who is at it for much of the second half. Bronco scored on a corner kick just two minutes and 15 seconds into this one. Sailing towards the top of the 18, Halverson and Daquila. But it's Engie who wins the battle. Dom's giving chase. Hangs on to it, has a couple of options in front, chooses Sayer. Sayer, waiting, has a little time to strike, she does, but it's high and wide. 
Sayer doesn't quite connect with that one as she'd hoped to, but I like that decision by Maya Doms. And you got to give credit to Sam Williams, number 25, who makes this run to the near post and is ultimately the one who creates that passing channel that then is ultimately played to Amy Sayer. Sayer with the shot. By the way, good news for the Cardinal. Kennedy Wesley back in the match after checking out earlier in the second half. And Wesley immediately putting the head on it and sending it out of bounds. Aquila has it taken away. She was looking for a whistle. Skips off of Sayer, finds Kitahada, now back to Sayer. Slid forward to Doms, 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 Doms! Did you see that? Maya Doms with the bomb. Three, one, Cardinal. Well, this is just a work of brilliance. A little third-man combination here, and Maya Doms just gets the separation she needs. Santa Clara doesn't step up quickly enough, and Maya Doms picks out her placement at the far post. That is a thing of beauty. Doms' fifth goal of the year, and the one time, the one time it seems, that Doms had enough space and time to do something like that, she makes the Broncos pay. Well, she gets the separation she needs. She gets her head down. The technique is good. She just checks all of the boxes and gets everything right. Oh, now it's desperate time for Santa Clara. And that one may have sealed the deal for the victory for Stanford if Santa Clara can't generate something quite quickly here. Well, Turnbow can do it, but this one goes right to Myers' mitts. And Paul Ratcliffe talked about how important it was for his team to continue to build confidence after a really tough 2020 season in which they did not make the NCAA tournament. He said he started to see that at moments in their trip back east to play against Carolina and, and Duke. And you've got to think the performance here today has also continued to build their confidence and help them take another step forward. Halverson got mixed up with Kennedy Wesley along the far side. Halverson shown the yellow card. And it's, it's been a tough, tough couple of matches physically for Kennedy Wesley over the last couple of weeks. As Wesley is, looks like she's trying to get back up to her feet just in front of the Stanford bench. We mentioned Wesley already playing with the broken nose, already came out earlier in this match. Perhaps had to get retaped. Just came back in a few minutes ago, and and now this. Now I was thinking earlier, that there are going to be some sore players after this one is done. Perhaps no one more sore than Wesley. And JoJo Harbor back into the match. Kennedy Wesley, her race likely run for the day. Yep. Yep, I, I think. We're definitely run, because she's subbed out now for the second time. No no longer able to re-enter here in the second half. Maya Doms coming off. Doms with the golasso. Handshakes and the high fives along the Stanford bench. Deservedly so. Duong back in the match. <laughs> Brady shielded off. And Brady gets the call. Intercepted by Williams. Setting it up, Brady. Swept away. Good recovery by Carly Reeves right there. Less than five minutes to go in regulation. Santa Clara hosting the Dons 
or check that they head up to the hilltop on a Saturday. And then they begin West Coast Conference play. Apparently this match against the Dons is not on the conference schedule. As Leontini has it. Can't get it to Breedy in time. Broncos beginning their West Coast Conference slate on October the 2nd against USD. BYU comes to Santa Clara October 30th. Always a big matchup between those two teams. Meanwhile, Stanford hosting Utah on Friday to begin Pac-12 play. Kita Hada tries the back swipe to no one in particular. Cardinal head down to Southern California to face UCLA and USC. Those games October 28th and the 31st, respectively, before finishing up against Cal on November the 6th. A look at the more immediate slate for Stanford. Road trip to Pullman, those are always fun. Early in the season. <laughs> that helps. You, you and I have been to Pullman in October. That weather can get a little dicey a little late interesting. in the season. And, and, and oh, by the way, the Cougs are a pretty decent ball club themselves. With Todd Schulenberger and, and what he has done with that program, taking it to heights that it's never reached. Yeah, great to see them in the Final Four the last couple of years. Morgan Weaver gave them the early lead in the College Cup semis against North Carolina. The Tar Heels able to recover and come back and get the win. You know, there's the, the rule that there's no cheering in the press box, but when Weaver hit that goal against North Carolina, I'm not going to lie, do a little fist pump in the press box. Yeah, and she's gone on to have a pretty no great doubt. career in the NWSL thus far. No doubt. But look, credit goes to, to Stanford today, particularly for the way that they performed in the second half. I think they just got better over the course of 90 minutes. Santa Clara started off hot, but really ever couldn't find a lot of their rhythm over the course of the game. Did have moments where I thought their pressing was good, their counterattack and transition from the defense to attack was good, but really couldn't, couldn't weather the storm that Stanford was putting on in the second half. Kelsey Turnbow, Izzy Dequila, as always, playing well together, looking to combine. But the defense and the organization of Stanford defensively didn't allow them really to ultimately break through. I believe that's Engie still on the floor for the Cardinal. It is. She rolls over to try to stretch some things out and make sure that, that she is, is good to go. And back on her feet. So many fantastic moments between these two schools. Santa Clara beating Stanford in the NCAA second round in 2016, a double overtime heartbreaker for the Cardinal. Stanford appears to be on track to get the upper hand here. Breaking away with two goals in the second half. Amy Sayer, the header off the corner kick in the 75th minute. And Maya Doms dropping bombs from outside the 18 in the 84th minute. As Meyer and Aquila play some games with each other. Brady chasing, Fouch collecting. Final minute. In the center, Turnbow. Daquila giving chase, poked wide of the net. Morero is there as well. Boy, she is all over the pitch. Even though she is Bennett's center back for Santa Clara. She is. Well, she's somebody who used to be a, a, a midfielder, right. so yep. somebody who has that ability to play make. Left foot, Meyer. In the air, Alverson sends it back. Harbor with the header, and it bounces out of bounds. Time running out on Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. 
to Quilla. Not a clean hit. Smith shot blocked off the post, but the flag up. Now Smith was offside. As this battle of champions goes to the Stanford Cardinal. Amy Sayer and Maya Doms with separation goals in the second half. And the Cardinal beat the defending national champs. The final score from Kagan, Stanford three, Santa Clara one. Stanford now six and two on the season, while Santa Clara falls to three, three and two. A fantastic match. We thought it would be. We had fun and we hope you did too. On behalf of all of us here at the Pac-12 Network, on behalf of our crew, and my broadcast partner, the one and only Danielle Slayton, I'm Troy Clarity. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening on a fantastic night for women's soccer in the Bay. Final score, Stanford three, Santa Clara one. Thanks for joining us here on the Pac-12 Network.